Welcome to this OpenTunes tutorial. In this video, we're going to be using a drawing tablet in OpenTunes. I'm just going to show you some of the new options that that brings into creating art in OpenTunes when you're using a drawing tablet. So the first thing is, I have my drawing tablet here. If I just start drawing, oh, I have to select a brush first. I can just start drawing here. So we can draw in vector, and you notice we have some different pressure. So if I press harder, the line gets a little bit thicker. You can draw in vector like this, but it does sort of limit. Like if we come over here to, to uh, use some of these raster brushes, we can't really use them. If we come to draw, it just draws. We see what we're drawing, but then it disappears, and nothing. It doesn't really do this, whatever what we're selecting. That's because there's a raster. We could come in here and play with some of this vector stuff, but um, to use the raster, we need to use a raster level, like we've talked about in previous videos. So we go to new level, and then we just need to make it a tunes raster level. And so I'm going to come over here and right click and delete this column that we were started on. And now we have a nice vec uh, uh, raster, tunes raster level here. And I'm going to add in a couple different styles and just sort of change some of these just so we have some different things. And this one I'm going to actually change over to play with some of these raster brushes. But first let's just grab this blue for our style. And let's come up here. So we're using the brush tool. And I want to point out some of these different settings that make a little more sense now. Under the size minimum and maximum, I guess I'll just start by drawing first. If we just do this, we can draw something. That was just sort of me pressing like medium light. But if we change the size of this, it's the minimum and maximum size. So now if I press softly on my drawing tablet, we get this size of line. If I press harder, it goes all the way up, much more extreme. And if I want it to, to always be kind of up higher to those extremes, we can have it be on this upper end, where soft is by default this size, and harder gets a little bit bigger. So that's why there's those two handles there. Um, also, hardness, just to kind of review, if we do our hardness, that affects sort of this, how fuzzy the outline of the line is. And again, sometimes you can also, um, we'll change our brush here so that pressure is going to be how um, light the line is, light and dark, and not how wide it is. And then smoothing, so smoothing right now, if we turn this way down, we're able to do very, very jagged. Let me just change the size too. So we can do like a little mountain top. We can do some very jagged things like this. Whereas if the smoothing is turned up, it'll smooth out that and make it look more like waves. So if we're trying to create that same thing again, it just makes it a little bit more smooth. And it kind of takes a little bit more processing power too. So if I get rid of some of this by hitting Control Z on the keyboard, it takes. you can see it follows my cursor around and it sort of takes a little bit more processing because it's kind of figuring out the average of every point that I'm going to. And then it's just doing all that. Oh, I guess I can just, yeah, create a new thing drawing. Okay, so um, let's go to um, look at some of these brushes. So here, let's look at this uh, different options we have. And again, like this isn't how I create art really. And so I'm, I'm not a traditional artist at all. I work a lot in vector and just drawing objects and shapes. So I'm just going to kind of hop through some of these and just hopefully give you an idea for some different things, from different ways that you could play with um, using a drawing tablet. Um, because this is kind of more like, you know, you've got diff different sensitivity. You can press really hard and get really dark, or you can press softer. <clears throat> There's always different built-in brushes. I believe you can also add brushes, too. Um, let's come down and grab a few of these different ones. Oh, back into here. And again, the settings are all up here, too, so we can change. The settings change on the actual brushes. We don't have a minimum maximum because the brush itself has some built-in characteristics. Oh, there was one thing I wanted to talk about too. Let's go back over to here. There is an order layer that we didn't talk about on just the brush tool if we come back over here. Like if I have red now, right now it worked out all over. So if we draw something, it goes over top of this. I'll turn down my smoothing so it's a little bit more responsive. But we can also change this to uh, like all under. Now everything we draw is going to appear underneath of this blue. Can you see that? And so it's, a, it's actually appearing behind there. And the, we can also turn it to palette order, which means whatever order it appears in the palette is where it will appear. So blue will be on top, and then red will be on bottom. Red, red will be underneath that blue. Oh, is it doing it there? Maybe that's not doing that for us. Anyway, and then we can also turn pressure on and off too by clicking this button here. So if we don't want to have the pressure, everything will just stay like one pressure level if we want to toggle that being on and off. All right, let's hop, hop back over here to this style, which is just sort of our makeshift style for doing all kinds of um, playing with different brushes. We'll just play with a few. I'm not sure. Is that this blend blur? That might, might be more of a different effect. 
We have this pencil, this nice pencil effect if you wanted to do some different type of penciling or you know light shading in. Uh, and then we can change the color on all, of the, all these as well. I wanted to show you two. So like this for example, if we did come over here and draw a shape, um, like a circle, what are we in? Let's draw a shape in the black. And then if we wanted to, um, we can add a fill to this. Maybe we'll fill this in with red, different parts of it. And this thing, we could even make it a texture. A lot of the stuff we've covered in the past, and so I'm not going too much into it. But um, what I do want to show you that we skipped over is this uh, tool here, the paintbrush tool. What it lets you do is you can choose what you want to edit, areas, lines, or lines and areas. So if we edit just areas, we can choose, like if we grab a new color here, we can choose this new color purple, and we can draw purple in, but it'll, it'll only draw in the areas. So that, that way we can color and fill in this circle, but it's not drawing over top of that black line. It's just drawing sort of around it. We can also do just lines. So if we grab just lines, now we can change just parts of this line purple. And it's not going to do anything but the line, so it stays within just the lines. And then, of course, lines and area kind of just acts like just a big round brush where it just writes over top of everything. That's kind of interesting, huh? So the lines one especially can be really useful um, if you want to come in and actually fill in like certain, you know, certain parts of, of the line and color it differently. It can be kind of cool. Anyway, um, that's really all I wanted to show. Um, you can do it like over top of the brushes too. So see where it, this is like keeping the, the original brush that was there before. So the idea is you kind of draw it within just like a black and then you can come in and do your coloring using this uh, brush, this uh, brush tool. So I think for a lot of you traditional artists out there, this might kind of help you bridge the gap of getting into like doing, working in digital. Um, check out also uh, Krita. Krita is a really cool program for drawing if you're not familiar with it yet. But um, OpenTunes does have some really good functionality for using a drawing tablet. And uh, although it's not something that I use myself a lot, because I, I make a lot of my artwork in other programs like Inkscape, and I just bring it in. But if you're creating art, I just want to show you some of these tools that are available. Uh, and using the drawing tablet seems to be pretty, pretty responsive and work pretty well. So, yeah. I'm going to leave it there. I have nothing else to say, but hopefully you found that informative. Go ahead and leave your questions and comments below. I can always look up a question and answer it for you if I don't know. And so I appreciate you watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.